<clears throat> Hello. Um, today I want to talk about a thing I, I have talked about already <clears throat> um, some years ago. So I may say absolutely really nothing of new to the film itself and even my overall thoughts. Because my thoughts are pretty much the same. Um, as they were some years ago um, when I talked about this the first time. But uh, because the film is 50, is turning 50 years old this year, I thought I uh, would take a look at uh, American Graffiti again and uh, just watch it and, uh, well, just enjoy it because I really love this film, you know. Um, <clears throat> of course, George Lucas made this film. Obviously, you know, he has had a, a, a fairly successful career, uh, I guess for the most part, you could say. Um, Francis Ford Coppola helped produce the film. He was able to really get this film going uh, after he did The Godfather. Because, <coughs> excuse me, George Lucas's first film, THX 1138, really did nothing for him and so after that he wasn't really able to do too much um the cast of this uh, includes uh Richard Dreyfus, Ron Howard uh then called Ronnie Howard still cuz you know he was still I guess, you know known as a, a child actor this was uh, apparently according to George Lucas the very first film that uh, Ron Howard ever made in his life without his parents on set. This was the first film he made like after he turned 18. So um, it's definitely a milestone into, for uh, Ron Howard's career in that respect. Um, <clears throat> as uh, Paul Lamette and uh, Charlie Martin Smith. Uh, Cindy Williams, Mackenzie Phillips, uh, Candy Clark, uh, Wolfman Jack, Harrison Ford, and yeah. George Lucas is actually in this film too. He's a, uh, you know, uh, the first, when you, when you see the, uh, Suzanne Summers, really the only time in the whole film when you actually see her in the T-Bird. Um, if you really pay attention and listen really closely, you can hear on the radio uh, uh, Wolfman Jack prank call a guy uh, at the, like Pinky's Pizza and the guy on the phone is, uh, that's George Lucas, so... You know, George Lucas really doesn't have cameos in his own stuff, but that was something I remember, uh, like, a, I think a year or two ago, I was just watching this, uh, enjoying, <laughs> you know, like this last time, enjoying the film, It's uh, because it's a really good film, and it's pretty funny. But, uh, all of a sudden, when that uh, prank call on the radio began to play, all of a sudden, I'm like, that voice sounds familiar. And I was listening to him like, that's George Lucas. Um, and I was just surprised. Um, you know, he, he seems to have it to where he wasn't going to be like one of those directors who's going to be in, um, have an appearance in his films, really. Um, Scorsese clearly is one who does have various small parts uh, in various films of his. Um, whether he gives himself credit at the end or not is whatever. Um, but, you know, and of course other directors do that. Like Hitchcock is probably the absolute best known for all the various cameos he did throughout his filmography. Then, there, of course, there are those who are like Charlie Chaplin and... Uh, Orson Welles, who are, who basically write parts for themselves, and then they are in their films. 
George Lucas is somebody who really, with except with the exception of a couple of films uh, of his own, he really is not in any film for the most part that he makes. Um, this is one, and of course, you know, John Milner's yellow car and the license plate is THX138. Couldn't have the additional one to make it 1138 because, well, back then, uh, as I said, uh, in 1962, uh, plates only had like, a, you'd only have like six. So you'd have like usually like, you know, three letters and uh, three numbers or some variation of that. Um, But, but I really love this film. Um, obviously, this is not my favorite George Lucas film. It's not one that I've often... <laughs> the way I've talked about another particular film of his... <clears throat> you know... Uh, you know, I would consider that to be my favorite as well as best film of his. Due to the fact that... Um, the story... Uh, of that as well as uh, of that film and the characters are just everything about that is truly amazing but you know this is a semi-autobiographical film uh, about uh, you know uh, uh, the characters George Lucas played or not played uh, basically was as a you know, he began as Terry the Toad he then became uh, John Milner and then he becomes Kurt by the end of the at the, as the film ends, because he goes off and he went off to college and made movies. Whereas in the film, uh, Kurt goes, uh, becomes a writer in Canada. Like, uh, implying he dodged the draft. Um, Steve was the hardest character for him to write because he's like, I. <clears throat> He was not Steve. He couldn't really identify with Steve at all. But, you know, he had friends who were Steve. But because he wasn't his friends, he's like, you know, to have that kind of real insight it was kind of hard. And plus, he probably wouldn't be able to fully uh, sit down with all those, those people and uh, ask them a bunch of questions and make sure to write down what they say or record what they say like uh, at least on a tape recorder and listen back you know because everybody at that point was probably doing a bunch of stuff and might have had families at that point since you know he, he george lucas actually has said that he missed his 10-year and uh reunion making this film because the film came out in 73 but he made it in uh like 72 and because of that, he wasn't able to go to his 10-year uh, uh, high school reunion. But instead, he was making uh, a film about the moment um, of his life. You know, couldn't film in Modesto, California, which is where he's from, because <clears throat> they, they changed so much within a decade. Like, you know, by the time he went back, around the time he was going to, film this movie they pretty much updated it to like 1972 uh, uh, which many towns do obviously but still you know there are still some towns that do re uh, look reminiscent of certain time periods um, here in Iowa there are still certain towns that sort of have a look where obviously things have been updated like on the inside of buildings that are still being worked on that were existed like in the 40s 50s 60s and uh, maybe even decades uh further back they're still you know they're old but they're still in use but you know they uh just they just uh continue to uh operate in our fine so because of that he had to find another town he was able to use a one town that they were supposed to use um 
they agreed to use, but after a while, uh, like for, like for, they were able to use like a uh, use that towel for like a one or two nights. So they used it for like uh, <clears throat> like a montage of cars driving around town, uh, and then they could just cut that into the rest of the film. Uh, yeah, I really love this film. Uh, hilarious film. Uh, George Lucas, you know, he, he was told by Coppola or challenged by him, you know, quit with this sci-fi BS. You know, that's going to get you basically never going to get you anywhere with your career. Uh, you need to do a comedy because you could never do a comedy. And then George Lucas probably says, yes, I can. And so his his uh, response to his ac uh, the accusations that he couldn't do a comedy was to make this movie <clears throat> about as he's uh, put it like my wasted uh, youth uh, driving around uh, my own town. Um, <clears throat> of course, he had a couple other writers who especially uh, punched up all the uh, Stephen Laurie scenes because everything else George Lucas was able to. For the most part, able to write on his own, even though he still hated writing because he's like, I, like I'll create the story, but that there you go. But I don't want to actually write a script from beginning to end, um, which he's had to do a few times, and then it, Gloria Katz and Willard Hayek um, <clears throat> were able to uh, punch up the uh, some of that dialogue and especially the Stephen Laurie scenes. Um, yeah, this is a film that uh, was a big success when it came out. Um, the soundtrack is amazing. Um, yeah, it, it just it, it's such an amazing movie. I I, I love rewatching this film every so often. Um, some say this is the greatest film George Lucas ever made in his career. Um, obviously, I think a small little known movie called Star Wars uh, is better. But you know that's unfortunately after the, after Star Wars, you know his career kind of went up in a nosedive. Nobody really wanted anything to do with. Lucas, because you know, that was a stinker. Uh, so you know what? Maybe he should have listened to Coppola's advice and knocked it off with the, you know, knock it off with all the sci-fi BS. But <clears throat> yeah, he didn't listen. Uh, yeah, made a sequel to this, uh, more American Graffiti. I don't own it, but I have seen it before, and. Uh, it isn't horrendous. Um, it isn't as good as this film, but uh, I don't think it was horrid. George Lucas constantly says it made a total of like, I think, two cents at the box office. Even though it actually was a pretty, uh, fairly successful film for uh, 1979, I believe is when it came out. It was at least a moderate success. You know, not the box office hit that American Graffiti was. And Richard Dreyfuss wasn't in the film because he's like, yeah, no, I'm not going to do it. <clears throat> like, you know, I love you, George, but no, I'm not doing a sequel to American Graffiti. Um, just like he didn't do a sequel to Jaws. Um, though I think Jaws 2 is a better film than Amer more American Graffiti, but that's me. But, you know, uh, uh Yeah, the film was up for Best Picture, Director, Original Screenplay, Supporting Actress for Candy Clark, and uh, Best Editing. It lost every single one at the Academy Awards. Personally, I think it's, of all those nominated for, um, <clears throat> at the Oscars that year, you know, it's, there's a lot of movies that were, about, that came out in 73 that were great, um. Lost to the Sting, which is a very good film. The Exorcist was also nominated. Um, 
I don't know. I've always just found this to be uh, better than those two personally. Um, obviously, it is a uh, it is my own subjective uh, opinion and taste, but I don't know. I've just always found this to be just a better film, and I thought it would be cool if it won Best Picture and Director and Screenplay. Though I've often thought the same about Star Wars, though. Uh, I talked about the, that year's Academy Awards a bit, as well as the film that uh, beat it before. Um, and there are film, people who do enjoy, uh, you know, the film that did beat Star Wars, and that is completely fine. Not my cup of tea, uh, personally, but, you know, hey, you know, mainly because the humor uh, in that film is not my sense of humor. Humor of this film, I think, is uh, excellent. It's a very good, appealing, you know, broadly appealing film. You know, and you don't have to be, have been around in the 60s, I think, to really appreciate this film. Some people might think because it is a, it is definitely a period piece, you know, taking place, you know, made like a decade uh, after, like, the actual setting of the film took place. You know, sometimes people... Th uh, hear about that for certain films and they're kind of like, I don't know if I want to watch that movie, but this is a film that's great because the characters and the story is all just they're, the story is engaging the characters are uh, fascinating and plus the soundtrack is really cool too, so if nothing else uh, the soundtrack is uh, <clears throat> good so, yeah, uh, performances are good, too. Um, this was, like, the first time Richard Dreyfuss really got to be the lead in something. So, you know, one of the first, at least. And, um, yeah, that's really all I have to say about it. I love this film. It's great. I love to watch this every so often, and I still do. And probably always will. So uh, what do you think about this film? Do you enjoy it? Do you dislike it? Uh, <clears throat> do you think this is the one of the best films of 1973? Are you like me and think it is the best film of 1973? Or is there a film like The Exorcist or The Sting or The Last Detail or Papillon, Serpico... Or really any film that came out that year is, do you think it's better? Why or why not? You can leave in a comment if you want, or don't. You can do what you want, really. Um, yeah, I hope you're all uh, doing well. Hope you all have a great day and a great weekend. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.